Okay, um, so I occasionally get asked about server authentication to um, Zscaler Internet Access. Um, often customers are migrating from, a, from an on-premise legacy proxy, a, a squid or a, or a blue coat proxy, where servers or workloads might be doing um, some form of authentication to the on-premise proxy. And that might be uh, basic authentication, um, it might be um, Kerberos authentication or integrated Windows authentication, um, or it might be a digest authentication. Um, and so the question is, oh, how does, how does Zscaler support it when most of your user authentication is SAML-based authentication? It's a, it's a redirect and a cookie, um, or you're enrolling in Client Connector and you can't do those um, with a kind of headless device, a, a device that doesn't support um, an interactive session. And uh, you'll see in here we support Kerberos authentication. Uh, users are synchronized and you create a Kerberos cross-realm trust to Zscaler. I'm not going to go into how we set that up. That's uh, described in the other, other sessions. Um, what I am going to go through is how you configure users and basic authentication on um, Zscaler and, and how that interacts with um, Kerberos. So if I come into my user management, um, I've got SAML and I've got SKIM configured for my users and my user credentials come across here. I could also SKIM sync across the computer accounts, but I'm, uh, I'll talk about how we uh, get those in there using an API um, as part of this, uh, this demonstration. So I'm going to create a user called uh, server in here. Uh, I'm going to be relatively trivial with my naming. Um, and uh, the way we're going to do that is we're going to use the API. Um, so I've got an API script here. Um, this is uh, how we get the API keys in here. It uh, reads in my uh, uh, YAML configuration file. So it tells me what my API credential is, my password for the API, where the API endpoints and API seed are. And I'm going to create a user um, in Zscaler called server. Um, and I'm going to give it a password. Okay. So, so that's what this bit of uh, code up here does. Um, it reads in the, the YAML file to get all those parameters. Um, and then what it does is it uh, generates the uh, obfuscated API key and it logs in and gets an authenticated session. Uh, and uh, the yeah, result of that is you get a cookie, essentially. Um, what it's then going to do is it's going to say to Zscaler, give me the list of groups and give me the list of departments. Um, and specifically, I'm interested in the first one in the list. I'm going to be relatively trivial with this. And I'm going to say, I'm going to create a new user. Um, which has the, the username that I created uh, in that YAML file. Uh, and I give it that group ID. It's going to be in group group one and it's going to be in department one. I'm going to be relatively trivial with that. And it's going to go off and uh, create that. So it'll uh, post that data to the user database. It'll activate it. Um, and then this is the uh, the key bit here for my, um, for my methods. So um, the result of this um, reading the user is I get the user identifier in Zscaler, and then I go ahead and I say for that user identifier, I want to enroll it and say that it's going to support basic and digest. So I push the data in there to say, okay, this user credential specifically will support basic and digest authentication with this credential that I push through. Um, so we go ahead and we, uh, we in push that enroll and then we activate it, okay? Um, so we'll, we'll, what we'll do is we'll run that uh, that bit of Python there. Uh, oops, uh, it's Python three, Python three, uh, ZS two users, uh, and uh, I put no error logging or debugging to the screen or anything. So they'll just go off and uh, do that. It'll take a couple of seconds to uh, connect, authenticate, run the push, run the activate, then run the second push uh, uh, and, and activate that as well. So. Um, uh, we'll come back to that in a second, and what I'll do um, is I'll come across um, to this. I'm using a virtual Zen, so I've created a virtual Zen in here. If I'm using uh, basic authentication, I really don't want those credentials uh, going all the way across the internet where they could be sniffed. I, I think using uh, basic auth is, is clearly a backward step, but it's part of, not necessarily a backward step, but it's clearly part of a, uh, of a, of a migration strategy. Um, identify what is doing basic authentication and migrate them. Um, then I come over to my locations. I've got my location here, my virtual Zen, and the virtual Zen is set up for enforced authentication, basic authentication, and Kerberos authentication. 
I'm using a VZEN. You could send this through a, an IPsec tunnel as well to us. Um, you know, there's any number of ways to get it, get the credentials forward to us. If you're not doing basic authentication, Digest and Kerberos authentication are clearly fine to be used across the internet. They are encrypted. Um, basic authentication obviously is just Base64 encoded, so uh, not ideal. Um, and probably part of some risk register to be using it in the first place. So it's gone off and it's created my users here. Uh, let's go across and we'll take a look at those users. Um, and we'll read those. <coughs> if you're paying attention earlier, uh, we'll see that this credential here is called server. Um, it's in the first group and it's in the first uh, uh, department uh, there as well. So we've got those uh, credentials created. Um, so what I'm now going to do, I'm going to scroll up through the list of uh, uh, credentials. If I run a K list, I'm not enrolled, so I'll, I'll run a, a, a K in it for server. Um, uh, we'll log in there, and we've got the Kerberos ticket for that. So now, if we um, run the curl, we'll start off with um, the proxy negotiate. So I need to pass a credential. I'm just saying log in with the currently used login user. And I'm targeting my VZEN. Now, VZEN and Kerberos. Uh, Kerberos is very uh, user principal name, needs to map to the canonical name of the, the, the machine. So we'll f I'll show you how this will work in a second. Uh, but I, I send that through. Um, I probably should just put a minus, uh, minus HTTP 1.1 and we'll get rid of some of the errors out of that. Um, and you'll see here, it, um, it connected to the VZEN, uh, got the IP address, um, sent the negotiate header, um, and the request went through, and we got the page, uh, which resulted in a redirect. Um, so Kerberos is clearly working. We're on a K-list. Uh, we got the Kerberos ticket um, for the VZEN itself. Um, and if I ping uh, vzen.welshgeek.net, you'll see it's actually an alias um to the to the host on the internet my gateway um and gets that if i dig vzen.welshgeek.net um, it's important that vzen comes with c name for the for the public node and the public node um is a v is a c name uh, as an alias record for the actual ip address that means that kerberos can can be requested um, it's also worth uh, noting if I just um, try and connect to that VZEN without any credentials, um, it will just return with a 407 unauthorized. It'll say proxy negotiate, proxy authenticate negotiate, proxy authenticate digest, and proxy authenticate basic. So it's saying, look, I support all three. Send me the strongest one. Now I'm specifically saying, in my case, um, I want to send it with uh, the proxy negotiate. Um, I could send proxy uh, digest, um, and to do that, I've got to send it um, a credential. So I'm going to say uh, server at welshgeek.net, and it'll prompt me for the password. Um, and uh, you see, I still got the same redirect back. But if we look at the process, what happened was I tried the connection, I got the unauthorized, and it said, uh, here's my digest. Here's my opaque and my nonce. And the client then went out and it looked at the password that I entered. Um, and it said, great, uh, I need to now generate a, a response to that nonce. So it said, okay, here's my client nonce based on that encrypted part portion of my uh, credential. Um, and and Zscaler said, yeah, that's fine. I'll let you through. Um, and then finally, I could do, um, uh, I could do basic. Uh, so proxy uh, hyphen user, and it'll ask me for the password again, and it went through. Uh, again, I got the same the same redirect, and in this case, again, I said uh, connected, um, connect, and I automatically sent the proxy authorization. That is a base64 version of my uh, username and password. Uh, if you're really interested, you could try and decode that. Um, but it won't get you anywhere because the credential will be deleted straight away. Um, but um, there we go. It went ahead and it uh, it got the uh, it got access through and uh, and away we go. So what have we what have we shown here? Um, what I've shown is that 
Um, I can have SAML authentication configured for my users. That'll just do a redirect authentication, uh, enroll users in client connector or proxy pack. Um, at the same time, I can support Kerberos digest authentication and basic authentication. Kerberos authentication is a cross-realm trust, relies on canonical names, the ability to, uh, uh, for the client to know the, the FQDN of the thing it's connecting to and get a Kerberos ticket for that. Um, digest authentication, an encrypted authentication mechanism. Um, the user credentials are created in Zscaler Cloud. Um, the client knows what those credentials are and sends an encrypted hash of those credentials as part of its uh, challenge response mechanism. And we support basic authentication as a legacy mechanism to authenticate uh, devices or users. Um, again, the user credential is created in the Zscaler cloud. And it matches what the client is going to send. Again, as we see here, it's a fully qualified distinguished name as the, the user. And we send the password along with that. And we um, Base64 encode those essentially. Uh, and Zscaler decrypts those, matches them. And as long as they're, they're matched, um, the user will be allowed to pass through. If you're going to use basic authentication, I'd rather you did it with a uh, a, a virtual Zen on-premise or a physical Zen or a private Zen on-premise if your, your capacities dictate that, um, or use an encrypted IPsec tunnel um, to the Zscaler cloud because you really don't want basic authentication credentials um, passing over the internet. They are, in some respects, uh, or not in some respects, they are insecure. Uh, they're probably on a risk register to avoid. Uh, but once you see them, you can obviously start applying policy and start moving them from basic authentication to either digest, um, Kerberos authentication, or some other uh, authentication mechanism that could be supported. I hope this is useful. Mark at zscaler.com.